Welcome back everybody. This is Jim Logan, Sales Director for FumeVac, coming to you from the Hastings Air Energy Control Tech Center in New Berlin, Wisconsin. What we're going to talk about today is hexavalent chrome in weld fuel. You've probably heard the term, but what is hexavalent chrome? Well, it's the sixth valent state of the element chromium, and it's actually a pretty bad substance for you. Where does it come from? Well, it comes from hot work processes such as welding, where you're putting the chromium through an arc and it generates fumes. And these fumes, again, are very dangerous to you. They attack the respiratory system. They can attack your skin, your liver, your kidneys, and your eyes. Uh, what makes it even worse is that this is actually a carcinogenic substance. And because of that, it's controlled by OSHA. OSHA sets limits of exposure, and not only do they set the limits, they also enforce them. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, sets and enforces the standards for exposure to many hazardous materials in the workplace. For hexavalent chrome, the permissible exposure level for hexavalent chrome is five micrograms per cubic meter, and that's over an eight hour time weighted average. The action level over which you must continue testing is actually one half of the PEL, and that's 2.5 micrograms per cubic meter. So what does that mean? Uh, let me try to put that in perspective. If this nut here represents one gram of chromium, and I take this and I break it into 200,000 little pieces, I can take one of those pieces, put it in a box that measures three foot by three foot by three foot, and that's approximately five micrograms per cubic meter. That's not a whole lot. To summarize, the OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, exposure limits for hexavalent chrome are as follows. The permissible exposure level, PEL, is five micrograms per cubic meter, and that's with an eight hour time weighted average. The action level is one half of the PEL at 2.5 micrograms with an eight hour time weighted average. If initial monitoring shows that the employee exposure is at or above the action level of 2.5 micrograms per cubic meter as an eight hour time weighted average, continued exposure monitoring and potentially medical surveillance is necessary. So who do these OSHA regulations apply to? Well, there's different norms and standards for different levels of industry. In general, you'll find a certain norm for the general industry, you'll find a certain norm for shipbuilding, and there's one for construction. But at the end of the day, if you're welding or using any hot work process where chromium is involved, it applies to you. So what are the methods of exposure? Well, as we discussed earlier, inhalation into the lungs, contact with the eyes and skin, and also ingestion. This is why often in plants where they have hexavalent chrome problems, you see that they're not allowed to bring water, coffee, lunches, or food onto the work floor uh, for fear that they may be exposed to hexavalent chrome. You can substitute the hazards, such as finding better welding processes, procedures, or low fume consumables. One of the most effective means is by the implementation of engineering controls, such as isolation, barriers, enclosures, automation, and of course, local exhaust ventilation, source capture guns, fume extraction arms, downdraft tables, etc. The last two means for mitigating the hazard, administrative controls and personal protective equipment are the least effective way to mitigate the hazard. Administrative controls simply change the way people work. That does not get rid of the hazard. And the same with personal protective equipment. It protects the operator, but it doesn't protect everybody else in the plant from the hazard. In fact, by OSHA regulations, you must implement either engineering controls or higher on the inverted pyramid if you're in excess of the PEL of 0 0.005 grams per cubic meter. OSHA has determined that if feasible engineering and work practice controls are not sufficient to reduce employee exposure to or below the PEL, the employer must use them to reduce the exposure to the lowest level achievable. Respirators must then be used to reduce employee exposure to or below the PEL. Local exhaust systems and processes that capture airborne hexavalent chrome near its source 
and remove it from the workplace are generally preferred to the dilution method of ventilation because it provides a cleaner and healthier work environment. If you weld stainless steel or other high chromium type material and you're looking for better ways to control your hexavalent chrome levels, please give us a call. We have solutions. It's what we do.